want to multiply ourselves, we got to build more and better leaders. Building more and better leaders. We've got to multiply ourselves, we've got to begin to have a process or a system where we can build more and better leaders. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, this is Paul speaking to uh, Timothy. Paul says, And the thing you, Timothy, have heard me, Paul says, in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Four level here. There's Paul speaking to Timothy. Timothy speaking to the reliable people, and the reliable people will be teaching the others. So there are all together four levels here. Basically, what Paul is saying is this, right? Hey, Timothy, you got to begin to have this process where you build more and better leaders at every single level of leadership. As many of leaders, uh, some of you may not be aware, but we're having some kind of a, a pastor's training and pastor's meeting for the past few days. And one of the things that we, we have concluded that at the end of the days, one of the things that we, we don't like is money because our father is very rich. Can someone say amen? But one of the things that we, we all are looking for more and more and more. Something that we all design is that we design more leaders. We design people whose, whose heart is totally devoted to God, who will come before the Lord and say, God, here's my hands, here's my feet, here, here's all that I have, I surrender to you. And someone who will not just surrender, but someone who is also committed to upgrade, to learn, to improve. Not because he has something to prove, not because we are like the world trying to kind of a, a, a garner more creditation behind our name, MBA, BBA, whatever, but we're going to come to a place where we desire to learn. If the people in the world, they are so eager to learn in order to kind of progress something that will not amount to even a beans of hues in a final analysis, how much more should us believers should have an attitude to, to want to learn? Because what we are dealing here, my friend, is not life and death. As serious as it may be we are dealing with eternal life and eternal death and the stake cannot be any higher. So, so I want to encourage us that we need to begin to kind of build leaders, more and better leaders at every level of leadership. In our church in Hope Singapore, we ask every pastoral group to focus on three areas. Uh, they are the D, they are the O, and they are the C. Is it behind me? Is it going to come up behind me soon? Yes. Is it? Okay. All right, there's a D, there's an O, there's a C. Well, um, what's D? D is discipleship, O is outreach, C is care. Three areas we ask every pastoral group in our church. These are three areas that we got to focus on. Without focusing, if you, if you let any of these three balls drop, it's going to hamper uh, your pastoral growth, both in quality as well as in quantity. What is D? D is discipleship, O is outreach, C is care. Let me, let's talk to you a little bit about care. Right? I'll just go through very quickly because I've shared this in yesterday's class. Care involves things like really caring for members, celebrating their birthdays, hospital visitation, uh, weddings, um, helping people to find life partners in the church, funerals. All these are very important things. People don't, don't care how much you know until they care how much people don't care how much you know until they know how much you, you care, right? So care is a very important thing. And, and to be honest with you, as, as a movement, uh, we are generally quite good at that, all right? If we don't use a name called Hope, we can use a name Care Bear. I think that will kind of uh, aptly describe us because we are quite caring, all right? And, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Second area I want to talk a little bit about is the, this whole area of outreach. Just that all the pastors and leaders know yesterday at, yes, at yesterday's training, when I, when I, when I asked uh, for a show of hands, how many of you think between the D and the O and the C, which, how many of you agree with me? How many of you think, right, that O is the weakest element in your church? 99.9% .9 of the hands were raised, right? O, oh, because it's something that's uh, most unnatural for most Christians. When it comes to discipleship, learning the word of God, worship, fellowship, we are, we are quite good at that. But when it comes to reaching out to people, uh, that we need to improve. Every single one of us, we all came to a consensus on that.